Hey, how are you doing? So today's topic is going to be resting membrane potential. Let's get started. So we'll be talking about resting membrane potential under four broad subheadings. Introduction, ionic basis, measurement and role of sodium potassium pump. Now it is an important topic as far as your theories and practical vivas are concerned. This is also another important topic. So if a question comes in your theory, this is a preferred pattern of writing an answer. It is a preferred method of writing an answer. This covers almost everything about the resting membrane potential. So starting with introduction, what is resting membrane potential? First, we'll describe what resting membrane potential is. There exists a membrane potential of minus 65 to minus 90 millivolts across cell membrane at rest. This is known as resting membrane potential. Now what happens exactly? This is a cell with its membrane. So at rest in normal conditions, insides of the cell are negative and outside there's positive charge. So there is a difference in potential across the cell membrane. As you can see, this is a cell membrane. Inside it is negative and outside it is positive. So there is a difference in potential at rest. That is known as resting membrane potential. The name is self-explanatory. The membrane potential at rest is resting membrane potential. Now, if you notice one thing in its description, it says that it ranges from minus 65 to minus 90 millivolts. There is a range because different tissues or different cells have different values of resting membrane potential. For example, if you take a large myelinated nerve fiber, for example, then its value is minus 90 millivolts. If you take an RBC, for example, then its value is minus 5 millivolts. So you can say there is a large range of resting membrane potential which differs from tissue to tissue or from cell to cell. Now another important thing to know here or to notice rather is that the resting membrane potential is always negative. This means that insides of the cell are always negative compared to the outside. This is the significance. Now why it is negative and how this occurs that we'll talk about in the ionic basis of resting membrane potential. So like we said that the insides are always negative. Now that's what the negative sign indicates. The measurement of this is done by an instrument called cathode ray oscilloscope. The measurement here is done by these two equations in theory on papers that is the Nernst equation and Goldman Hodgkin Card's equation. This is done in theory but practically we use this instrument called cathode ray oscilloscope to measure the potential difference across a cell membrane. Now another important point is that when the cell is at rest, when there is resting membrane potential present, we say that the cell is polarized. It is polarized. The cell is polarized. Now this word is important because when we talk about action potential in the next video, we'll talk about two other terms, depolarization, repolarization. So the word polarized means the normal resting membrane potential is in picture right now. So depolarization and repolarization are basically changes in the resting membrane potential that we'll talk about in the next video. So as far as resting membrane potential is concerned, this is the introduction. This is the basic meaning of the word resting membrane potential. Now we'll talk about the ionic basis. We'll talk in detail how resting membrane potential is formed and why it is negative on the insides of the cell. So now let's talk about the ionic basis or the genesis of resting membrane potential. Now if we are to consider the ionic basis, there are three important ions that play a role in development of resting membrane potential. Three most important ions, sodium, potassium and chloride. These three ions play the major role in development of resting membrane potential. Now, if we are to say in one line about the genesis or the ionic basis of resting membrane potential, it is this. Resting membrane potential occurs due to unequal distribution of ions across cell membrane. This is the explanation of genesis of resting membrane potential. Now, let's see what this line means. 
So to understand the meaning of this line, we'll talk about ionic bases of resting band potential under three subheadings. That is selective permeability is the first one. So selective permeability of cell membrane itself means that the cell membrane is selectively permeable. It is freely permeable for certain substances. It allows certain substances to move based on the concentration of the electrochemical gradient and certain substances it does not allow to move that it is impermeable. So we say that it is selectively permeable. Now we're talking about the permeability of these three ions, but most importantly, these two ions, sodium and potassium. So this is a cell along with its membrane. Now the cell membrane is permeable to sodium. Now remember, sodium is more intracellularly and potassium, uh, sorry, potassium is more intracellularly and sodium is more extracellularly. Now potassium tends to move outwards and sodium tends to move inwards. Now the selective permeability of cell membrane is such that the permeability of potassium to move outwards is 100 times more the permeability of sodium to move inwards. Again, the permeability of potassium to move outwards is 100 times more than the permeability of sodium to move inwards. So this proves that potassium plays a more important role than sodium in genesis of resting membrane potential because the permeability of potassium is 100 times that of sodium. So potassium plays a more important role than sodium. So this is about selective permeability. Now the main reason of potassium's permeability being more is that whenever these ions move, they are in the hydrated form. They are attached or associated with water. So the size of hydrated potassium is less than the size of hydrated sodium. Normally potassium is bigger or greater in size than sodium, but hydrated potassium is smaller than hydrated sodium. Therefore it moves more. The permeability is more for hydrated potassium because it is smaller in size compared to hydrated sodium. So that's the reason for the difference in the permeability. And because potassium is more freely permeable, it plays a more important role. So that is the selective permeability theory because of which there is difference in the distribution of ions. Now the second theory is the gibbs donin equilibrium. Now what does this equilibrium say? Now gibbs donin equilibrium, hear me out first. Firstly, the gibbs donin equilibrium has two basic points. First point states that when two electrical solution or basically two ionized solutions are separated by a semi permeable membrane. Imagine these are two ionized solutions side solution A and solution B. So when two ionized solutions are separated by a semi permeable membrane at equilibrium, both these solutions will be electrically neutral. This means that the total number of ions on side A will be same and total number of ions on side B will be same. This means that the total number of cations on side A will be equal to total number of anions on side A. Only then side A will be neutral, right? For side B to be neutral, the total number of cations on side B will be equal to total number of anions on side B. Only then will the solution B be neutral. So the first point states that at equilibrium, both the solutions are electrically neutral. So sodium on side A will be equal to chloride on side A if you're considering the solutions to be sodium chloride. So sodium and chloride on side A will be equal at equilibrium. Only then will the solution A be electrically neutral. Similarly, sodium at site B or solution B will be equal to chloride in solution B. Only then will the solution B be neutral. So the first point of gibbs donin equilibrium says that at equilibrium, both the solutions are electrically neutral. The second point the gibbs donin equilibrium says is that at equilibrium, the product of diffusible ions on both sides is same. This means that the concentration of cations, for example, here we're taking sodium on side A into concentration of chlorine on side A. What does the second point say? That the product of diffusible ions is same. So this means that sodium into chloride on side A will be equal to sodium into concentration of chloride 
on side B. This is what occurs at equilibrium. So these are the two points of Gibbs down in equilibrium. This says that at equilibrium both the solutions are electrically neutral and the product of diffusible ions across the cell membrane on either side is equal. Sodium into chloride on side A will be equal to sodium into chloride on side B. Now imagine that there is, now we'll compare this situation with a cell. Imagine this is, these are, this is a cell, this is the cell membrane. Alright, this side A is a cell, imagine. Now as we know that cells have many intracellular proteins which are negatively charged and they are non-diffusible like we discussed in the previous lecture. These proteins cannot move across the cell membrane but and they are negatively charged. So they will be placed inside the cell, right? So if this is a cell and this is the cell membrane, let's consider X to be a non-diffusible anion or rather an intracellular protein. So X is a non-diffusible anion. Now we apply the Gibbs down in equilibrium to this scenario. So this first point will say that the total number of cations will be equal to total number of anions on side A. So total number of cations is obviously sodium and the total number of anions now would be chloride on side A plus the non-diffusible anions. So get it. Total number of cations will be equal to total number of anions and total anions will be chloride plus the non-diffusible intracellular proteins that is X. So this is what the Gibbs on equilibrium's first point states. On side B, it is it's going to be the same that is sodium is going to be equal to chloride on side B. Side B basically represents the extracellular compartment. Okay, this is not a cell. This is a cell, this is a cell membrane, this is an extracellular compartment. Extracellular compartment has no negatively charged proteins like inside the cells, right? So extracellularly, the first point is going to be the same. But intracellularly, the first point is going to have the negatively charged intracellular proteins. Now the second part of Gibbs on equilibrium says that the product of diffusible ions is the same. So this means that the total amount of sodium into total amount of anions on side A should be equal to the product of ions on side B. So this means that sodium into chloride and X minus should be equal to sodium into chloride on side B. This is on side A. This is side A, this is side B. Now if you notice here because of the addition of the intracellular proteins, the non-diffusible anions, the total number of ions on this side is increased. As we said in the previous lecture, this is because the negatively charged, negatively charged intracellular proteins will tend to attract the positively charged cations. So this means that sodium on side A, that is intracellularly, will be more then extracellularly because this will attract sodium which is negatively charged right when this was not considered both these solutions were neutral so sodium had no movement but when we consider the non-diffusible anion it will tend to attract the cations so sodium will tend to move inside so the amount of sodium will be more on the insides of the cell right because sodium moves inside and to maintain the electrical neutrality chloride ions will move towards the outside of the cell. So the concentration of chloride outside of the cell will be more. Now if you get me, all these things, all these mechanisms are leading just to one line. This line. If you can see all these mechanisms are causing difference in the concentration and the distribution of ions across cell membrane. You see sodium or cation is more on the inside and chloride or anion is more on the outside so this causes difference in the concentration across cell membrane and that is what Gibbs down in equilibrium explains and that is how we know that this difference in concentration leads to the genesis of resting membrane potential right now you might think that inside of the cell there are more cations so inside should be more positive compared to the outside because chlorides are moving out but previously you said that inside of the cell is negative, right? So let me explain that to you.
Now we see the concept of nonst equation or nonst potential in genesis of resting membrane potential. Now consider a beaker having two solutions, both having the same concentration. On side one there is 0.15 molar NaCl. On side two there is 0.15 molar KCl, sodium chloride and potassium chloride. This membrane is permeable only to potassium. Let's consider the situation, okay? For us to understand what nonst equation of potential says, let's consider this scenario. This membrane is permeable only to potassium. Since potassium is present in higher concentration on side two, it will start diffusing and move towards side one, right? Potassium will keep on moving towards side one along the electrochemical gradient because potassium is more here definitely there is no potassium here so potassium keeps on moving from side 2 to side 1 till a point is reached where potassium no longer diffuses that is the potassium here is equal to the potassium here potassium diffuses till the concentration of potassium on either side is equal this potential the potential difference across this membrane at this point where there is no net diffusion of potassium across the cell membrane in either directions when the cell membrane or when the membrane is permeable only to potassium is known as the nonst potential or the diffusion potential or the equilibrium potential again what is nonst potential nonst potential or diffusion potential or equilibrium potential states or rather it is the potential at which there is no net movements of an ion in either direction across a membrane which is permeable only to that ion get it so this is nonst potential now to calculate the nonst potential to calculate the potential difference nonst gave an equation known as the nonst equation the nonst equation is plus or minus 61 log concentration of iron inside the cell upon concentration of iron outside the cell this is the nonst equation again nonst equation is plus or minus 61 log concentration of iron inside the cell upon concentration of iron outside the cell now the iron could be any iron in this case potassium when we talk about resting membrane potential i told you there are three ions we consider sodium potassium and chloride more importantly sodium and potassium and still more importantly potassium right so nonst potential is nonst equation is this now plus or minus means that whenever you put an ion if the ion is cation then you use the negative sign if the ion is anion then you use the positive sign so again for cations you will use which sign negative sign and for anions you will use which sign positive sign before this 61 right so now we have said continuously that potassium is the main contributor to resting membrane potential so let's calculate the nonst potential for potassium so if we put the values or the concentration of potassium inside and outside the cell like we discussed in the previous lectures the concentration of potassium intracellularly is about 140 milli equivalents per liter and the concentration of potassium outside the cell is about 4 milli equivalents per liter right so putting the values here we get minus because it is a cation 61 log of 140 by 4 that is 35 on calculating this you will get the value of minus 94 millivolts nonst equation measures the potential difference in millivolts so the value of the nonst equation or the nonst potential for potassium is minus 94 millivolts in the introduction we said that the resting membrane potential ranges from about minus 65 to minus 90 millivolts now if you see the values are very close it is not the same why because potassium is not the only contributor there are contributions from sodium and chloride as well therefore values are not same but it is very close to potassium because the major contribution is by potassium so potassium's nonst potential is minus 94 millivolts which means that if the membrane or the potential difference across the membrane is minus 94 millivolts and if the membrane is permeable only to potassium 
then at this potential difference potassium will not move in any direction across the membrane the net diffusion across the membrane of potassium will be zero at minus 94 millivolts get it why do we consider only potassium here because i said in selective permeability of cell membrane the permeability of potassium is 100 times more so permeability of potassium plays a major role so here we consider permeability of potassium as an example so this is all about the nonce equation and the nonce potential and this is all about the ionic basis or the genesis of resting membrane potential now another important thing if you notice here the nonce equation states that there's a negative sign for cations now you know why insides of the cells are negative because according to this equation whenever we calculate the value for cations it should be negative right so the resting membrane potential is negative always there are other reasons why it is negative which will come to later but this is one of the reasons now another very important point to note is that nonced equation or nonced potential explains the genesis of resting membrane potential as well as can be used for calculation or measurement of resting membrane potential just like this the drawback the only drawback of nonced equation is that you can calculate the nonced potential or the diffusion potential of one ion at a time only we all know that in the normal human body the resting membrane potential is contributed by these three ions simultaneously nonced equation can calculate the potential of only one ion at a time so this is one drawback that it cannot give you the exact value the exact total and overall contribution of these three ions together this is the only drawback of nonced equation so this is the first part of the next topic that is the measurement of resting membrane potential can also be done by nonced equation which is plus minus 61 log of concentration of iron inside upon concentration of iron outside the cell the third subheading was measurement in theory the resting membrane potential is measured using two equations the nernst equation and the goldman hodgkin cards equation the instrument that was used was cathode ray oscilloscope in theory we use these two equations now we've already discussed about no, about the nernst equation and the nernst potential again quickly going through it nernst equation is equal to plus minus 61 log concentration of the ion inside the cell upon outside the cell now if you want to consider about potassium then we put the values of potassium inside and outside the cell here and we calculate we'll get a resting membrane potential or the nernst potential rather of minus 94 millivolts if we calculate for sodium similarly putting the values here we get the nernst potential of plus 61 millivolts now like i said the normal value of resting membrane potential is between minus 65 and minus 90 millivolts it is closer to the nernst potential of potassium because potassium plays a major role it is a major contributor so it is not exactly minus 94 it is a little above minus 94 because other ions like sodium tend to take it above if you see the nernst potential of sodium is plus 61 so it will tend to take it above now please don't get confused between nernst potential and resting membrane potential resting membrane potential is always negative nernst potential can be positive for example sodium secondly resting membrane potential is contribution of the three ions the three most important ions sodium potassium and chloride so it is a contribution it is the result of the three ions uh, potentials the nonce potentials whereas the nonce potential is for one ion only so the contribution of the nonce potential of all the ions will lead to resting membrane potential whereas no, when we talk about nonce potential it is just for one ion so get that in mind so the second equation is goldman hodgkin cards equation this is the big fat equation which will give you the resting membrane potential in millivolts now if you see here like i said nonced equation has one drawback that it considers only one ion at a time whereas actually resting membrane potential is a result of three main ions acting together at a time goldman hodgkin cards equation uses these three ions contribution simultaneously and helps us to calculate more accurately the resting membrane potential now goldman hodgkin cards equation states that resting membrane potential is equal to minus 16 log pna.cna p stands for permeability and c stands for concentration 
now permeability of sodium and concentration of sodium plus permeability of potassium into concentration of potassium plus permeability of chloride into concentration of chloride inside the cell all these permeabilities and concentrations of all these three ions are first inside the cell upon the permeability and concentration of the three ions outside the cell remember even in the nonce equation it is inside upon outside even the goldman hodgkin cards equation it is inside upon outside right so this considers all the three ions together and therefore gives us a more accurate value of resting membrane potential coming to the fourth subtopic or the subheading of resting membrane potential and the last one is the role of sodium potassium pump now we've discussed in detail about the sodium potassium pump in the previous lecture we said that sodium potassium pump is present in the cell membrane of all the cells of the body it pumps three sodium ions outside and two potassium ions inside two potassium ions go inside and three sodium ions come outside so there is a net deficit of one ion on the inside one positive charge on the inside is reduced is deficit this also explains why insides are negative because one positive ion is less on the inside compared to the outside so guys that is all about the resting membrane potential all its concepts so we'll summarize it quickly so to summarize we started resting membrane potential with its introduction we saw what resting membrane potential was and it is also called the state of polarization we saw its normal values and is measured using a cathode ray oscilloscope then we moved on to the basis or the genesis of resting membrane potential is ionic basis there we talked about the selective permeability of the cell membrane then we moved on to the gibbs donen equilibrium and finally we saw the nonst potential concept the third heading was the measurement which is using nonst equation and goldman hodgkin cards equation and the fourth subheading was the role of sodium potassium pump i hope it made sense and i hope the concept was clear enough for you this is an important topic so please get it clear in your mind because all other topics the forthcoming topics such as the potentials in the heart and the skeletal muscles are all based on this chapter so i hope this helps you and i'll see you in the next one